absolutely stunning so it's just a whole shimmer stack love it you can feel the money hi guys welcome back to Lou's beauty closet if this is your first time here hi i'm lou i post weekly beauty and luxury videos if that sounds like something you'd be interested in hit that subscribe button down below and if you're already subscribed ring the bell so you don't miss out on any videos without further ado let's get into it Right guys so today we're doing eyeshadow collection we're doing eyeshadow palettes eyeshadow singles liquid eyeshadows eyeliners mascaras if it goes on your eyes you name it we're doing it in today's video i have done a declutter before i will link that up on the screen for you guys if you wanted to check that out i probably will do another declutter soon in the near future <laughs> stay tuned it's probably going to be a long one just because of the sheer volume of things I've, i have but anyway enough waffling from me guys let's get into these organizers into these drawers and see my eyeshadow collection okay guys so we're back to this view so i've taken out some of my acrylic drawers here and i've also got some other storage on off to the side now i know that this is not the average person's collection you do not need this amount of product you don't need this amount of eyeshadows or palettes or makeup whatever i just love this this is a hobby for me this is a passion for me this is something i love so i just thought i'd put that out there so this is my second favorite part of makeup and you guys will probably see see that so let's get into it so first i've been fondling this palette this is the urban decay born to run shadow palette it is absolutely stunning i was actually sure i was going to get this when it released but i'm so happy i did it's been a great travel palette i think it's a great all-encompassing palette it's really put the quality level up for urban decay from all their naked palettes and i think they should be looking to come out with more palettes like this so this is born to run so you've got your warms your neutrals your mattes you've got your smoky shades you've got greens you've got browns you've got transition shades it's great it's all encompassing it's definitely a solid palette to have really lightweight I like the print and the mirror is massive so you can actually travel with this and use this as your travel palette next i have my huda beauty electric obsessions palette this is the only huda eyeshadow palette i have these are quite cute they're easy to collect just love the size and for me this was like my sort of colorful palette i don't have a lot of colorful palettes as you guys will discover of how this has all the colors she's now got different ones with like certain color stories like she's got toe patch i like how this sort of has everything then i have these two which i did myself these are probably my oldest eyeshadows in my collection these are a com combo of makeup geek and anastasia beverly hills shadow so these are in z palettes basically got mine this is my matte i have also decluttered some shadows here coco bear you've got morocco at one stage this was all i used and a lot of my eyeshadows are like almost close to panning this pink z palette here is mainly makeup geek and there are some abh shimmers but this is like my foiled makeup geek shadows and my shimmers but i felt like they were really the go-to back then for building your own palette and starting your own like shadow collection as well because they were so affordable i really loved my foil so this is like flamethrower curtain call and then i've got a few shimmers here i also had duo chromes but i've since decluttered those because i don't really reach for them flamethrower this was like the shade i wanted and then i believe this is curtain call yep and then these are just like standard shimmers from Makeup Geek and ABH. But how stunning are these shadows? They're so gorgeous. So this foiled finish is what you would get from like wetting your shadows. So this is dry. Stunning. And I have two NARS palettes here. So this is the NARS Wanted palette. This one was an impulse purchase, which it probably if I do a declutter, this will be on the list to go. I hardly reach for this. And when I do, it's only the same shades I use. I do like these shades. These I think these are the hardwired shades. Only this side of the palette that I tend to use or this bottom row and this side. And maybe this shade. These are the I don't really reach for at all. The shimmers definitely are what draw you into this palette. The matte are okay. Stunning. It's just, you know, not something I reach for. Another NARS palette. This is a lot newer in my collection. This is the Provocateur palette they released for their holiday release last year. They did a punk take on things because, you know, holidays you tend to see pretty glitter, you know, those sorts of tones. They just went, nah, we're going to go hardcore. So. And I'm going to drop my palette. <laughs> As it comes with a mirror, robust. I love the design on the palette. When I see this, to me, this is like my smoky eye palette. I have used this palette in some of my um, Zodiac looks in my series, but I love these. Show you guys 
these and then we will go into the rest of my palettes. So I've just got lashes as well. So I've just got a pack of, multi-pack of Ardell Wispies. This is my paint pot, my Pro Longwear paint pot from MAC. Quite natural, this has been my go-to primer for a lot of looks. I'm pretty close to panning it. Ingot gel liner, which I will admit I don't really reach for much. And I've got my Stila Glitter and Glow Shimmer and Glow Pigments Liquid Shadow. So these three are the Glitter and Glow. So I've got the shade Rose Gold Retro, Beauty Junkie, which was released for Mecca. And then it's now, you can get it worldwide. And then this shade Molten Midnight, that has actually dried out on me. And I've had to sometimes put Duraline in there just to get it to work. It's just like dry glitter now. See that guys? So I don't know, the rest of them haven't done that. So it's only this one that has done it. Beauty Junkie is beautiful pink, but I should reach for it a lot more than I currently do. Then Rose Gold Retro, I love this one. I love using this as a base for like cut creases and things. So I'd say this one is on its way to drying out as well. So that's what those look like. Then you have the, these are the shimmer and glow. So these are more just the, the bases, the color, pure color with a bit of sheen. I quite enjoyed these. I've used these in their entirety by themselves. This is Vivid Jade. Love, love, love this one. This is absolutely stunning. Look at that, so creamy. So this is quite new in my collection. Then I have this, which is Pagal. I quite love this as well as the name. Stunning. And these, as using these as bases for eyeshadow looks is stunning. You can cut crease with this as well. So nice. Then I have uh, my Solo Steel Art Shade. This is featured in a few looks on this channel. So this is my Vivid and Vibrant Eyeshadow Duo Sapphire. This was the one that performed the most and I quite love blue. So on the left is the more matte, not matte, but satin type of shadow. And on the right is the pure glitter. So this is stunning. I'll just show you guys, but you're probably fed up of seeing these. So that's the right side and that's the left side. So it's absolutely stunning. Then I have my ABH glitters, glitter glue on my matte glitters. So I've just got the ABH glitter adhesive. Really like this adhesive. I usually use my Too Faced glitter glue. It's, it comes in almost like a nail varnish application. So it has this nail varnish applicator and you can just put it on your eyes, on your brushes. ABH glitters, I have these when new. I got this last year during Black Friday sales and I've got Party which I've been loving and I've been using with a lot of the looks. So I love the blue with the different multicolor reflex. Crystal Cave, I don't really have glitter that looks like this. It has a sifter, but it's also got a lid for the sifter that you just push back into place. So the MAC one, you've got, I've got Copper Sparkle and then this is Rose. It's not a limited edition pigment, but they did it in the limited edition packaging or something, just the box. I've actually taken off that lid that comes with it, but this is how the pigment comes with MAC. These are the ColourPop ones. The formula wise, they're okay, but Stila takes the cake in this category for me. So these were the Zodiac Pop, Zodiac collection that Kathleen Lights did with Col ColourPop. So I've got Constellation and Astrology. This is supposed to be like liquid telepathy. I loved that shade when she did that quad where the light is, but these I found have dried out quite quickly as well. So that's that one, need to use it a lot more. The, oh no, Constellation, sorry. This is quite nice as a base for eyeshadow looks and for cutting the crease as well. Then I've got some Solo Colourpop shadows. These two are the only ones I have. I did have a much bigger collection of these, but I've since decluttered them. This is limited edition and I think has since been discontinued from Colourpop. It's Luckfully. It is so stunning. This is pretty similar to that Stila one. Look at that. I have this one and this one is very new. I haven't actually used it yet, but it's gorgeous. This is called As You Wave. Base and reflex, like orange, rose gold. It's absolutely stunning. So I'll just swatch those. That's what those look like here. Mascaras here. So I've got my Hourglass Mascara. This is their Kosha Mascara. I love this. This is my favorite mascara currently of like all time. And then I've also got a mini version. I've also got a mini perversion, which I usually just give away because I really like this mascara. I have a NARS eyeliner. And then I have a mini Bad Girl Bang Mascara, which I also love when I finish this. 
I'll buy a full size. This is another Wispies pack from Ardell. This is the Demi Wispies. Got just random like disgusting looking lashes here. I've got a pack of singles that I've not even tapped into yet. So we'll see. I also have another tray just dedicated to lashes. So this is some Eyelore lashes. This is Exaggerate. These are some Mecha Max ones. I quite enjoy their lashes. This is the Mysterious pair. I love this and the first date pair. I love for like every day or like wispy kind of looks. I've got my pot of eye products. So I've got some liners here, Urban Decay liners. These are the color, the razor sharp liners. I haven't used these in a while actually. Retrograde, the label has come off of this, but this is the light purple one. This is the dark purple. And then this is Zodiac, I think. A nice glitter liner. Other liquid liners. So I've got, I've got two Stila ones. I've got the black, which is intense black. This before the Fenty came in my life was my favorite liner. The Stila liner in Midnight, which is like a dark, it's sort of, it's a bit different to the black, but it is stunning for when I want liner, but not, not black, a bit of color. And I've got my Fenty liner. This is my favorite liquid liner currently. The way the handle is really ergonomic, the formula. Then I've got just a pencil, a normal like crayon. This is a Stila one. This is white for like right in a corner. So it's just a normal retractable. I've got the Brow Contour Pro from Benefit. The lighter shade I'm pretty much out of now. So I don't really reach for it anymore because the dark shade is too dark for my whole brow. It's cool product, but it's a bit gimmicky as well. And I've got the ABH Brow Definer, which I think I'm pretty much out of as well. It's got a spoolie on the end, so I keep it around. So my current brow product is the Benefit Precisely My Brow. It's this thin retractable brow pen, and then it has a spoolie on the other end. So this is shade six. And then I've got my spatula for depotting and for taking products out of jars. I've also got a, I've got two melt stacks together. This is the haze stack, <laughs> the melt haze stack. They have a thing for, for cannabis, I don't know why. They always come with a little mirror at the top. So the shades are, so the top is Indi Indica or Indica, then Bogart, then Ganja and Haze. So obviously the names are pretty indicating of what they are. These shades here are my favorite in the whole stack. And they're magnetic. Then I've got the She's In Party stack. So that's what this one looks like. So you've got like your deep, deep shade, your deep matte. You've got your dusty rose, cool dusty rose, then your shimmers. So this is, oh. This is so this is Skeleton Kiss. It's really nice, like reflective, reflective, like peachy duochrome eyeshadow. This one's actually called She's and Parties. Then the matte is Last Caress and Mean Streak. The bulk of my eyeshadow palettes. So there's still a lot more. So first up, I've got this nice little five pan from Natasha Denona. And this is the Cranberry palette. It was her holiday, one of her holiday palettes from last year. It is absolutely stunning. This was actually an impulse purchase. I didn't have this on a wish list, and I'm actually quite happy that I did buy it. This is the Zodiac palette, the Kathleen Knight's collab. I obviously had to get this because I love all things Zodiac. This is how it looks, standard Colourpop cardboard packaging with the mirror, which is generous size. And then you've got these gorgeous shades, representative of each Zodiac. Again, a lot of people got pressed about the shades and how they didn't represent them. Then I have another Colourpop palette. And this is the Shayla collab. When this released and when I got this, this was something I was using nonstop for a long time. And this is a bit bigger. The mirror is generous. Love the packaging on this. The shadows, this is definitely more of a cohesive palette, I would say. You've got your wearable shades, your mattes, your transitions. You've got some standard shimmers, your gold, your champagnes. You've also got shades for smoky eyes and something a bit different where you've got these like Blues, pinks, it's just really nice. Then I have my Mecha Max palette. This unfortunately is limited edition as well. Really good value for money, 25. Shadows, comes with a mirror. So I reviewed this and did a giveaway as well. So this was lovely. I will say that I haven't reached for it recently, but I'm not gonna declutter it just yet. Now we're getting into our more expensive beauties. Got my Natasha Denona palette here. So I've got this one, which is more of a new edition. This is the gold palette that was Holiday limited edition. I'm pretty sure it's still in stock on Beautylish. So this beauty is stunning. This is one of my favorite palettes of all time in my collection at the moment. The mirrors there, stock standard with Anastasia, with Anastasia, with Natasha. 
she's also got this plastic thing which i wish next this year in her releases i'm really hoping she prints them under the pans i just think at this price point you shouldn't have to have this kind of thing got your traditional gold you also got these like duochrome green type of golds and you've got all the mattes i said all the mattes here i can wear them you know a lot of palettes there's like a throwaway shade there's a row of throwaway shades i said with this palette i can wear every single shade in this palette other than natasha denona palette is the sunset palette this one i actually got on the second release this was a also a game changer for a lot of palettes like this was like the warm warm tones colourpop did their own version a lot of brands did their own version love how there's a yellow there's a lot it's very warm though you know when i look at my other palettes and then i open this one i'm like this is actually a really warm tone palette but it's gorgeous again hardly any throwaway shades it's so stunning it, it does kick up a dust storm but this one i actually ripped out that the names then i've got zoeva this is the only zoeva palette i have left in my collection still stand by these as being really good palettes especially for beginners they're really inexpensive really good quality and they have a gorgeous gorgeous range of them and this is the caramel melange i just love it because of the tones like it's warm tone warm tone browns orange and the shimmers are like gorgeous shimmers that you can use got three anastasia eyeshadow palettes so i've got soft glam i was not sold on this initially and then i saw it more and more and i was like okay just get it and i got it on sale and i quite enjoyed it the standard neutral neutral tone palette and um, i think if you are a beginner in terms of mid-range palettes or you're just looking for a good good decent quality palette that has well-rounded shades just grab this you've got your black for smoky eyes you've got your deep browns you've got your transition shades and some nice shimmers i have modern ren which is pretty much makeup royalty this was when anastasia was like at their i'd say at their peak at their best like everything they brought out was gold it was like the first of this range of palettes they did so this is very warm tone but had those oranges and pinks in there so this was yeah the game changer i still have mine still my original one i haven't used it a lot recently though i probably should break it out a lot more but this is just a well-rounded palette really this is the norvina palette i have actually done a review on this there is a lot of fallout with some of the shades though but when you look at it the tones are actually stunning and some of the shades are shades that i don't really have like soul is such a unique shade to the palette um these shades here eccentric it's like that mustard brown just I just really like the shades, even the shimmers that they've got. Like a lot of them are a pain to work with. Then the last big palette that I have, the most expensive palette in my collection, is the Pat McGrath Bronze Seduction Palette. This is such a heavy duty palette. You can feel the money is what the back looks like. It's like a bar of gold. Another annoying thing, why it's Auntie Pat, please, please. Why at this price point are brands putting the shades or the names of shades on a piece of paper, a piece of plastic? Please, can she do this like design on the actual eyeshadow? Like even if she does the circle around it or just writes the names in a circle around the palette will be so greatly appreciated. This is the beauty. I have done swatches on this and I've also done looks on this palette too. It is stunning. It is beautiful. It is luxury. It is what dreams are made of. This for me is the first Pat McGrath palette that I think when I, she opened it and showed it, it was the most cohesive out of them all. You can make cohesive looks with the whole palette without reaching for anything else. The heroes and even the mirror is like so luxe. But the heroes for this palette are these shades here and this aubergine shade is so well done and made. It's amazing because a lot of shade, a lot of brands get this kind of colors wrong. This red shade, stunning. This pink here, stunning this white duochrome stunning this shade i think you guys get my drift i look at that guys that is amazing again i got this um acrylic storage from etica they are an australian company i'm pretty sure they ship internationally they have sales and discounts all the time all right guys so that is my eyeshadow collection i told you it would be a long video there is a lot there are a lot of palettes there's a lot of singles there's a lot of stuff Comment below your favorite part of my eyeshadow collection. Also let me know if you have any of the same palettes I do or eyeshadows. I think that'd be fun. I'm pretty sure we have similar tastes. Also guys, I want to do a and a video on the channel soon. So comment below any questions you have for me. If you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. If you're already subscribed, ring that bell so you don't miss out on any videos. Can't wait to see you back here again, guys.